support the Warriors for over a decade. He was an MP up in Queensland. He's a good old mate and joins us now as we talk all things league. What a pleasure to have you back on, Jason Costig and Costa. G'day, mate. Marty, good afternoon to you. And before we get into it, uh, on a on a sombre note, uh, I feel the pain that you and your brothers and sisters have been going through in recent times with uh, the natural disasters. So can I uh, just state the obvious? Uh, we've been thinking of uh, you guys in, in recent times and uh, tough times as well. And uh, um, I'm sure uh, that a lot of people uh, on this side of the ditch uh, would echo those sentiments, mate. Uh, best wishes to your brother. Yeah, thank you so much for that. Look, it's a weird situation, Joe Jace, because you've got some parts of the country have been absolutely devastated and it's almost yeah. like next door nothing's happened. And so for a lot of people, unless you sort of dig down deep, look at all the pictures where you know people in these places. We've got Mark Watson. I know you know Watto well. And, and poor old Watto, uh, Watto, he doesn't know if him and his family get back to his house at, um, at Tamurawai. I mean, you know, all of the neighbours have slipped down the bank there. They don't know what the stabilisation is like. This could take such a long time to fix. I want to go back to your place because I know that you've had the same kind of stuff happen, these flash floods. And, and you know, there was one in yep. Queensland a couple of years ago, and I look at the YouTube footage of it, and, mate, there are cars in a car park. You would have seen this footage. The people in the office building are looking at them. Then a bit of water laps. The next bloody minute, there's a tidal wave of 20 footer come down, mate, and sweeps them all. It happens that quickly. Well, it does, and, uh, you know, I, I, I travel the length and breadth of Australia and have in the past, and, you know, we say we're, we're a wide brown land, but the brown can change real quickly with uh, Mother Nature, and, uh, you know, and uh, I know that uh, there's little places that uh, are off the beaten track that people haven't heard of, and they're still recovering. little town like Ugara, uh, Brad Fittler in the New South Wales Blues, uh, their Hogs Tour has been into regional New South Wales in the last, in fact, it's still going on the last couple of weeks, and... I'm not sure if they've been to Ugara, but some of these places have got a rich rugby league history, a great sense of community, uh, and it's no different to those small communities in New Zealand that, uh, you know, they're proud of who they are and where they come from. Uh, and I, I dare say that what they just want to know, um, that help is coming and that people care. Yeah, yeah. Because that is so important, and, and it doesn't matter whether you follow rugby league, rugby union, the colour of your skin, the religion, none of that comes into it. And it's all about looking after... Um, y- your brothers and sisters and look I've got uh, an auntie and relatives in Turkey they're not in the earthquake zone uh, admittedly but uh, I know that the Turkish rugby league president for example who grew up in Australia following the Bulldogs and he's a successful businessman in Istanbul um, he's told me effectively that uh, you know there's very few people in Turkey that don't have any connection to what's happened there in that part of the world uh, and the devastation there so you know times like this we think of uh, those in need and, and so we should Jason Koskin is with us. The All-Stars Indigenous game, I want to uh, tackle first because I watched that whole game. I thought everything about it, I was just delighted by it. Right from, you know, I don't know what the Aboriginal equivalent of the haka is called, but I just I was delighted that the painting behind the goals, which was just reflective, it's so culturally appropriate. The crowd was brilliant. The singing at half time. these players actually played a really physical game as well. So, mm-hmm. look, I don't know whether it's possible to bring it to Rotorua or wherever else, but... The concept is goddamn good. And I and I you know, as I was having a hack at rugby during the week and going, you know, you're super rugby launch and everything else, and it's the rah rah. Why don't you take it to where the fans are? Do something good for the people, take it to the little places. We kind of forget this, don't we? And every time it happens, it goes gangbusters. Why don't we do more of it? Well, hats off to everyone in Rotorua because I've been there before calling International Rugby League. I enjoyed my time there as a tourist, but also as a broadcaster. And I'm pleased. I mean, we give the NRL a lot of criticism, Marty and rightly so, for things that they don't do. But they did well here in in selecting the venue and taking it uh, to that great city. And it was a great cultural showcase, as you've alluded to. And uh, and from the Indigenous point of view on on our side of the Tasman, there was a greater emphasis this year on the Torres Strait Islander culture. Now, that's a part of Australia that most Australians, Marty, I kid you not, they know very little about. I've had the privilege of being up there and to the spiritual home of Eddie Marbo, who... Um, is very much a, a legend uh, of his people uh, to his uh, final resting place, in fact. I stood over his grave once with the, the local coppers and a very moving time it was for me. I spent the night there on Murr or Murray Island in English and it's far removed uh, from uh, the rest of Australia. In fact, Brett Webb, the former Warriors yep, yep. player, former Kiwi International, you'd remember him well. His grandmother lived up in Thursday Island, which is the capital of the Torres Strait. So the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander cultures coming together and there was a greater emphasis on the Torres Strait Islander people and I'm pleased to see that. You know, I mean, the only disappointing thing I've got to say, Marty, is that a number of players pulled out and I think many of your listeners who are no mugs, they're no fools, uh, I think that was disappointing for the game 
disappointing for uh, the two teams. But those who stood up and, 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 and wore the jersey, they did so with pride. There was one player in Butler who played for the Indigenous team. He plays in the second tier, Marty. He plays for the Central Queensland Capras in the Host Plus Cup, the, Q- the Queensland Cup, if you like. Right. So, you know what I mean? So for players that, you know, didn't want to play or couldn't play or maybe were told by their clubs, Marty, and that's the elephant in the room here, we don't want you to play. There's others that stepped up and uh, probably not a lot of uh, spotlight put on the, the clubs there uh, and holding them to account. I dare say that's what you and I and people like us in the media need yeah, to do and, yeah. and ask the question, what the hell's going on there? But otherwise, I thought it was a great promotion. Long may it continue. And just summing up, I hope it comes back to Rotorua uh, and perhaps in Australia when we host it again, perhaps bring the game to Cairns, which is such a hotbed for people, particularly who carry the bloodlines of their ancestors and others from the Torres Strait Islander perspective uh, cool. in far north Queensland because they haven't had a game and uh, I'm sure they would love it up there. All right, Jason Costigan is with us. We've got eight um, trial games happening over the weekend. But just one thing, look, and, I brought, and I brought this up earlier in the week, um, that the, the hit by Kerr on Fisher-Harris. Now, I mean, you know well, I mean, in rugby, that's a straight red card. Shoulder to the jaw, there's no excuse for it whatsoever. And I do wonder... When the NRL are going to jump this train like the NFL have as well, is it going to take a mass class action lawsuit? Is it going to take a lot of these old guys? We've got Andy Raymond unfiltered on every week, and he, you know, one of the tragedies that he expresses to us is some of these old guys, some of these old players whose names names are legendary, who can't remember their own name these days. League is a man's sport. It's a it's a hard ass physical sport. We know that, and there is a risk of injury, and you ha- almost have to buy or sign a waiver, even if you don't have to sign a waiver when you start. But at some stage, Jason, when is the sport? going to actually look at this, take it seriously and go, we have to rule this out of the game like the shoulder charge, like the stiff arm. You can't do that. Well, look, no one wants to see people get smashed up, you know, and admittedly, historically, people would come through the turnstiles, Marty. Of course they would. I remember 85, mate. I remember the Tamati Dowling fight like it was yesterday and I was roaring like everyone else was. Come on. I'm I'm sure you would. And and some would say the hit on Daryl Williams by Wally Lewis. You know, if that happened today... Would that be allowed? See, well, what about Kidwell? What about Kidwell on Big on Big on Big Willie? That wouldn't be allowed today, right? No, we could we could go on and on. We could bring out exhibit after exhibit yeah. here, and 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 I'm sure a lot of memories are coming flashing through the minds of uh, your listeners right now, your loyal listeners. And the game has never been cleaner, but that doesn't mean we can rest on our laurels. And look, I think that uh, you know the referees. They're clearly operating under difficult conditions, the most difficult conditions ever. You know, I mean, I'm not sure how Bill Harrigan would go refereeing in today's game. I, I dare say if they're the rules, he would enforce it. He was a policeman after all, for goodness sake. So he was used to enforcing the, the law, literally, um, for many for many years, decades, in fact. So, you mean, I think players who go on the field know that they are playing a, a t- tough contact sport, a physical sport, and that's our point of difference. I don't want us to get to the stage where it becomes so sanitised, it's become a glorified version of touch football but at the end of the day if there's foul play then people should be held responsible if that means they get charged and rubbed out then so be it they need to suck it up let's talk about these warm-up games then and costa i don't want to get ahead of myself here okay but i'm just saying that what i saw against the west tigers a week or so ago if the warriors replicate that against the storm (laughs) i'm not i'm just saying I'm Here just, I don't, I don't, look, I don't want, but look, this is the only time of the year that us Warriors fans can actually behave like this, mate. We've got as much I'm, chance I'm, as every other team in the comp. Lachlan's probably saying, listen, Lachlan, your producer should give you a tablet, Marty. Calm down, mate, because I know every team is undefeated in the Telstra Premiership Thank right you. now. Thank They're you. undefeated. Look, these games, I don't want to call them kick and, uh, you know, kick and giggle, but they are trial matches. Uh, they're playing for a big deal, Marty. Let's, let's, I'm going to be an elephant in the room twice here. $100,000. For goodness sake, when South City won the Tui's Challenge in the border city of Albury, what, 25 years ago, they picked up $200,000, right. I think, from memory, in a, in a real competition. And, like, fair dinkum, have we not heard of inflation? Peter yeah. Bellini, <laughs> yeah. please, get a get a grip, eh? Fair dinkum. I mean, they'll the drink Treasury. that. You know, they'll bloody drink that the night that they win yeah. it, won't they? Yeah, does. well, Bellini's needs to check with Treasury. Check the Treasury, the <laughs> inflation figures. Fair dinkum. Like, and that's under both sides of the political aisle. I'll give you the tip. But... Coming back to these games, they are fairly meaningless. Look, I'll give an example, uh, you know, like uh, Dimitrik uh, Sipakula, for example. He's one of these kids, uh, the Warriors, that they've got big raps on, uh, Otahuhu Leopards uh, product, back rower. He's 18, Marty. Remember the name. 
Sipakula. They, they've obviously locked him up. I think he's been in the Warriors system since he was 15. He played uh, quite well against uh, the Tigers last week. You're right. They did play well. But it counts for nothing. You don't want to pick up injuries. And this week's games are more serious because you roll out more of your big guns with an eye to the premiership starting in less than a fortnight. So the game in Christchurch, you know, would they like to win? Of course they'd like to win. Of course they would definitely like to win. But at the end of the day, you don't want you don't want you want to build up your combinations, build confidence and come away with it with no injuries. So you've got every chance of getting two competition points from the get-go so, you know. when it counts. Costa, when it is, counts. That what, is that what killed the nines in the end? Because remember that, 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 that it might have been the last or second to last year in Auckland, there were just all of those injuries. Players were out for the whole season. And, it just, I mean, it's the, oh. it's your biggest fear. Isn't it? I know that, look, you can get injured, you know, walk into the car car park and a car runs, all of that kind of stuff. But it just oh, mate, always... Mate, I, got, I got bitten by a dog last year. There you go. But it always feels unnecessary, doesn't it? Well, a Bulldogs fan. At a fan. Venue too. You got at bitten a by a dog. Oh, that doesn't surprise me because that's what they like, those Bulldogs fans, mate. Wouldn't surprise well, me. Well, I worked with the Bulldogs. I would have thought I'd get some, you know, some <laughs> leniency. But, but, but can I come back to your point? Yeah. Look, the, the, the whole nines concept, I'm a big fan of the nines. I had the chance to call the Fijian nines, actually, with Mills Muliaino. Uh, what a great guy he is, mate. Me. Yeah, brilliant guy. Yeah, from what, and what a great thrill it was, uh, well, for both of us because we never met each other, but we knew about each other, obviously. And so it was great to hook up with him live on Fiji One, live into New Zealand on Sky and live into Australia on uh, KO the Fijian Nines, and that, that did, did not involve professional players, but it was a great showcase of domestic talent in Fiji late last year. My personal view, Marty, is that we should be playing a Rugby League Nine series, similar to Rugby Sevens, in that October, November window, with cash up for grabs, and I mean real money here, televised, and games in different parts of the world. It might sound ambitious, but when we had the Rugby League Sevens going back to the early 90s, guess what? The likes of Noah and Andruku told Rugby Union to stick it up their Jats cracker and the Fijian Rugby League story was born. Right. And that was celebrated only last year. So you've all got to start somewhere and there's always risk when you play. And so at the end of the day, there's clubs, the clubs that run the NRL can't, they've got to be called out, Marty, because we've seen the clubs blocking the development of the game internationally time and time yep, again. Yep, yep. And that has got to stop because there's got to be more to Rugby League than Parramatta playing Penrith on a Friday night. That's, you know, I mean, that's great, but there's got to be more to it. And I think what we saw in the Rugby League World Cup with the different cultures and countries coming together and what we've seen before uh, with other nations. You look, for example, Slovakia, of all places, they started playing international rugby league only a few months ago. So there's places off the beaten track in, in East Africa, West Africa. They're getting involved in rugby league and not before time, and I welcome that, and, and we need to be facilitating that and supporting that and, 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 and trying to grow same the Same time, game. though, Costa, because same time, the- though. Look, same time, mate, that, you know, and this is one of the frustrations with rugby is that it feels like it never goes away. I've got a good mate who's now, uh, he's a Warriors fan, he's got a job at the Warriors, he's like a, he's like a pig and muck, mate. He, look, he, honestly, he sent me a photo the other day, he had all his Warriors kept that he'd been given to wear all over his bed. He said, I just hope she doesn't come home and jump in there because this is the finest sight I've ever seen in this bed. <laughs> you know, and I, I understand where he's coming from. But look, he's you know, get, he's you, his jollies. you get the chance to miss it. That's what I love about it. And I know last year was a big full calendar because we had the World Cup and everything else. But yes. rugby just seems be, it never to stop and you never get a chance to go, God, I wish that come back. The great thing about the NFL I love is that it lasts for four months. You spend eight months going, God, I want this to start again. You know, we haven't had test cricket in this country for it feels like forever. We got, we're playing England at the moment. We've just passed the follow-on people. All of a sudden, everyone's on test cricket. The beautiful thing about the NRL is we look forward to it again. I don't want to overcrowd the calendar. And I, I'm well, just... Marty, well, Marty, we don't need to be overcrowding the calendar but you talked about rugby union and other sports their calendar seems to go on not everyone plays a you know a four week four month season and at the end of the day historically the, the kiwis would travel to the northern hemisphere and and we'd have great britain coming down under and whatnot but that all changed don't forget not only with the, the 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 media wars between super league and the establishment as in the arl but also the shift from winter to summer rugby in rugby league in the Northern Hemisphere. And this morning we saw the first game of the new Super League season starting this weekend in February, the competition itself, and a big win it was too for Daryl Powell's Warrington Wolves, second last last season, their worst ever in Super League, and they absolutely flogged Leeds, who of course uh, coached by the son of Brian Smith, uh, Rowan Smith, who made the grand final last year. 
their competition is up and running. I think the Super League in the UK plays too long of a season. Their grand final, for goodness sake, is two weeks after the NRL, but they're jamming in Challenge Cup and a lot of other stuff along the way. I think, at the end of the day, player welfare in the Northern Hemisphere is put to the side. Here, it's a massive priority. You've got to get the balance right. We need to have an international window. You go and get Troy, uh, Troy Grant on your program, the IRL chairman, he will say, October, November is the window for International Rugby League. And I say, bring it on. Because at the moment, Marty, we don't know when the Kiwis are playing next. No, we it's don't. all a no, big that's, mystery. Yeah, yeah. And, that's, and you and know and what? Historically, yeah. Marty, Marty, historically, that has not been the case. And I'm jack of it, and a lot of other people, particularly old school rugby league people, they're jack of it too. Yeah, and especially after, look, we talked about this last year, didn't we, with the momentum of the World Cup. We've got about five minutes oh. to go, mate. So, look, about five, six minutes to go. All right, so let's let's talk about this NRL upcoming season. And we're going to talk about this because, Costa, we want to welcome you on every every single week, mate, because I, I love sitting here. I love listening to your talk in league. And I know you've got so many other strings to your bow in, in, in terms of all the Indigenous league that you call, that you follow, and everything else. We may not have time for all of that today. But hard out. In terms of those clubs, I look at that points table uh, right now and everyone's, as you say, on zero. You know, no one's got the advantage right now. But just looking at those, look, you you know, your Panthers, your your, your Roosters, your Melbourne Storm, these teams aren't going to get any worse. I I could almost pencil in six or seven names and I feel like the rest of us are all playing for that eighth spot. Is that that reality? There's a little bit of that. But at the end of the day, Penrith, they can't keep the players that they've got because of the talent equalisation measures, i.e. the salary cap. That's why players have been offloaded. That's why Burton's now at Belmore. Canterbury will go north on the ladder. You know, I mean, at, at the end of the day, they've had a shocking run, haven't they? They've got a new coach. Where did he come from? Penrith. So that's one of the great things about our competition. You go and have a look at, say, the Super League. Well, if you take Bradford out, they're not in the comp anymore, my old club in the north of England. It's all about, what, Wigan, St. Helens and Leeds. And people are sick of that. So, you know, that's a big problem for the game in the Northern Hemisphere. Other sports envy the NRL because they aren't predictability. You are right in what you say. And Penrith, for mine, they will they will put the cleaners through St. Helens. I don't think St. Helens will come close in this World Club Challenge at Penrith. Uh, tomorrow, obviously, uh, round two, week two of the preseason game starts uh, today with games at Gosford. But all eyes on that World Club Challenge. Of all the games, that's the one game that stands out, Marty. Penrith versus St Helens, the NRL Premiers versus the Super League Premiers. They are playing fair income serious. There'll be some big hits and galore in that game. If there's one game you want to see, okay, when's this on? Sorry, actually, I'm, I'm just writing this. So when is this Sunday? Is it? Yeah, that's on tomorrow. tomorrow that's on sorry. tomorrow. Penrith tomorrow. and St Helens okay. in the World Club uh, yeah, Challenge. Because normally... don't forget, this is Penrith. Hey, Marty, don't forget just quickly. This is Penrith, who weren't that interested in the World Club Challenge not that long ago. Again, paying lip service, and that's being genuine, uh, generous to them. But all of a sudden, they had a change of heart because St Helens said, "Well, come down. You've got an odd number of teams with the Dolphins coming in under Wayne Bennett in a new odyssey, a new team coming in the comp." St. Helens fixed a problem for the NRL and all yeah, of a right. sudden... Yeah, right. Eight matches. Yeah, that's what I was thinking about. Okay, finally then, how is Benny going to go with those Dolphins, mate? Well, I think he'll go well. I think he'll go well. I think he's got a very good forward pack. I don't expect them to finish last. I actually had the privilege of calling the Cowboys in their first season, the first season of the Warriors, obviously, same year. But the Cowboys, unlike the Warriors... Well, we struggled. I remember calling our first ever win in Wollongong against what was the Steelers, yep. and they finished with the wooden spoon. I don't believe the Dolphins will finish with the wooden spoon. They are a very wealthy organisation, Marty. Don't kid yourself, and our listeners out there need to know that they are not for uh, lacking in resources and, and firepower. You can only spend so much on players. They've got the best players that they could. Would they have liked better play, playing staff? Would they have liked Munster? Of course they would have loved Munster and more. But Bennett will make sure that they're, they're more than competitive. And I think they'll give a good account for them, of, of themselves. And, and I think it's a, you know, don't forget, it's not an expansion of the game. We've had teams in Southeast Queensland before with the crushes. That's right, crushes. That's right. That's a big, that's a big challenge. I'm happy to talk about that another time because they are not growing the game, the NRL. They don't like the criticism. But if they want to grow the pie, particularly the revenue pie, the broadcasting pie, to have people who are at the coalface developing the stars of tomorrow, particularly in the bush, they've ripped a lot of money out of New Zealand with TV rights. What are they putting back into the game in New Zealand? Not a lot. I want to finish on this. We've just had a text come in. Uh, David has texted in to say, the sun's out here in Auckland. The sky is blue. It's Friday afternoon. I'm just off to the pub. 
And and Costo, Costo just pulled out. Stick it up your japs, cracker, mate. He says, I couldn't wish for anything better. Have a great weekend. That is high praise, my friend. That is high praise. Well, it, well, it is. I don't have any japs crackers in the cupboard, <laughs> but I've got some. <laughs> Fair to give and stick up your japs, cracker. I love them, mate. Coffee, so, is, so listen, good. it's always, it's, it's always a. Hey, listen, it's it's always a pleasure. But just before we go, yep. there's always that rivalry between league and union, and you know I'm happy to push that barrow. I just want to give a big plug here for my friends in Kenya in Nairobi. Go on. They've got the Benjamin Ayimba Legacy Tournament coming up. The Benjamin Ayimba Legacy uh, Competition. It's a rugby league sevens competition named in honour of Benjamin Ayimba, former Kenyan uh, rugby sevens coach who was a founding father of rugby league in Kenya. They are saluting their their fallen comrade with a competition in his honour. Even though he had a huge background in union, he was a founding father of rugby league, and that's the Kenyans developing the game in East Africa, and that's happening at Easter. So as I said, it, the game's changed a lot, Marty, since I held the microphone with Sky Television all those years ago. Uh, we've had the proliferation of the women's game, which is fantastic. We've had uh, the wheelchair game. I actually called the first wheelchair state of origin match uh, just over 12 months ago. I call it the changing face of rugby league. It's quite amazing. Absolute pleasure, my boy. Thank you so much for your time. That is Jason Costigan. Devlin. Oh, how does he do that? How does he do that?